Hello, hope you are well and happy, you and your family and all, all beings on the earth. We all deserve to be happy and to love each other and to love ourselves. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about self-forgiveness, forgiving ourselves for our mistakes. So the importance and benefit of forgiving and loving ourselves but equally the importance of ethical and virtual behavior. Loving ourselves and forgiving ourselves go side by side with behaving towards others as we would like them to behave towards us. Okay, so forgiving ourselves does not allow us to behave uh, in an unjust way to others. Now we live in a reality in which our choices in a world of free will create our reality. So we're living in a world of choice and our choices are creating our reality. Everything that has happened and is happening is the result of our previous choices and our present choices will affect what will happen from now on. So you will find many similarities in this class with the previous one, which was forgiving others. So our choices today, whether we choose to forgive others or forgive ourselves is an important factor as to what our reality will be like from now on. This is a very important act, forgiving others and forgiving ourselves. Now, the concept of soul agreements, which are opportunities for connecting with a higher nature. So the idea here is that as souls, we make agreements to give each other various experiences by our behaviors, and those experiences are growth opportunities. It's like two um, actors playing out their roles in the play in which one, the role is written that he must harm the other. But when they leave the theater, there is no bad blood between them because they know it was just a play. Now we as souls know that it's a play. Our egos and our minds do not perceive it that way. So why is it important to forgive ourselves? When we feel guilty or do not love ourselves or feel self-rejection, then what happens? We do not wish the best for ourselves. If we don't love ourselves, we don't wish the best. That is, we don't do what is in our benefit, such as uh, exercising, breathing, uh, taking measures to, so, to care for our bodies and our minds. We're more likely to smoke, more likely to eat in ways that to undermine our health. We tend to sabotage our health, our relationships, our success, and our happiness. Just as this man is sawing the branch on which he is sitting. So people that don't love themselves, that haven't forgiven themselves, feel the need to punish themselves and not allow for themselves to have health happy relationships, success, or happiness. We more easily feel rejected, injustice, and anger. We get hurt much more easily. We take offense much more easily. We're more difficult to be with when we're feeling guilty and not loving and accepting ourselves. We become more antagonistic and aggressive and defensive than we would be if we forgave ourselves and loved ourselves. We need to find faults in others. We feel relieved when the others have faults. And this image shows that one finger pointing at the other, but there are three fingers pointing at ourselves. So we, when we're not re accepting ourselves and we're feeling unworthy, we need to look for other people's faults and focus on them and perhaps talk about them. It's more difficult to understand and forgive others' faults when we can't forgive our own. It's more difficult to accept love from others or the divine. Others may love us, they may express that, but it's difficult for us to believe that and to accept and recognize that love. It's more difficult to love ourselves since we don't believe that we deserve to be loved. So why accept respect and love ourselves. Then we can feel more peaceful and happier. Okay? 
forgiving ourselves and loving and accepting ourselves allow us, allows us to feel peaceful and happy. Then we can forgive others more easily. It's essential for our health. Guilt destroys our health, just as anxiety and fear and anger are destroying our health. We learned in the earlier uh, sessions that five minutes of negative feelings lowers the power of the immune system for five hours. And guilt is one of those emotions. I will experience my higher nature, letting go of these negative feelings towards ourselves. I will be happier and more a pleasant present. I'll be a, a more pleasant person to be with. People who feel guilty are difficult to keep company with. Let us not be that. I will transcend my emotional self and experience my higher nature. The divine and the beings of light love me as I am. As all divine beings, all saints, all enlightened persons in their bodies and out of their bodies love us unconditionally. The conditional love is just a function of the ego. And if we even take in that conditional love, which is a function of the ego, and we've placed it on the divine, imagining a divine being that loves conditionally and creating in our minds a divine being who has conditions and even punishes and, and even hates and is angry. I mean, this could not be the divine being. It's a shame to believe these things. Now, in ancient Aramaic, and actually in Greek, the word for sin means a failed effort. So this is the sin. We were not able to hit the target. What is the target? An ethical behavior. So because of our beliefs, our emotions, our ignorance, our fears, our attachments, we're not able to get the... It's not something bad. It's a failed effort, uh, which needs... Exercise. It's a matter of exercising our ability to behave ethically, to behave towards others as we would like them to behave to us. It's not a matter of punishment or being hated by God. It's a matter of evolution. And at the present time, because of our fears and needs and programmings, we're not hitting the target. So sin is not hitting the target. It's not being able to be who we really are. So I've created a process of, of six steps towards self-forgiveness. It's somewhat like the TAT, but there are differences uh, that we used last time for forgiving others. So the first step is to realize and accept the moments when our behavior was not correct or just and ask for forgiveness. So the first step is to realize those moments that we're not feeling happy about the way we behaved. Maybe we were critical. Maybe we were aggressive, maybe we told lies, maybe we were sarcastic, maybe we did something that we would not like someone to do to us, and admit it and ask for forgiveness. That's the first step. Now that being may not be in their body anymore, so we can ask forgiveness through a letter, which of course they're not going to receive, or through a form of mental communication. The second aspect is to try to correct the wrong done. If possible, it may not be possible. If we have stolen something, give it back. If we have told lies, correct them. Now, the telling of the lies, there's an anecdote about a man who told lies about the, the priest of the village. And then he went up to the priest and said, you know, I've been telling lies about you and I'm really sorry. Will you forgive me? And the priest says, of course. But just do one thing. Take a pillow with feather, feathers you know, down pillows with feathers. Open it up, and when there's a lot of wind, just shake it and let the feathers go everywhere. And the man says, okay, it seems strange, but I'll do it. And he does it, and goes back to the priest, and says, okay, you're going to forgive me? And I says, yes, but please collect the feathers. <laughs> you can't. You don't know where your lies have gone and where they have established root, okay? So, it, of course, the man is forgiven for his wrong. The idea is that we need to be careful what we say because we don't know where it's going to go and where it's going to take root and who is going to believe that. 
So the third step is analyze the emotions, illusions, attachments, and needs that caused us to behave in this way. So what were we feeling? What we were attached to? Were we feeling injustice and we reacted in that way? Were we feeling fear or guilt, anger, betrayal, suppression? What were we feeling which caused us to behave in that way? And my experience throughout so many years is that there are two basic causes. One is defense. We're being defensive. So we're trying to protect our self-worth or our safety or our freedom. We feel betrayed, we feel hurt, we feel we've been done injustice to, and that we are defending ourselves. So most of these behaviors towards others that we regret afterwards are defensive behaviors. The second cause that I found throughout the years is intense desire. For example, intense desire to smoke may cause me to smoke in front of others, even though that's harmful for them and it bothers them too. I'm, I'm so attached to something, I can't consider what the other people need. Or intense desire has caused a lot of people, a number of people, to cheat on their spouses. The desire for variety, desire for sexual pleasure, desire for affirmation, the illusion that I would have happiness in this way. So it's not a matter of defense, it's a matter of intense desire that we cannot control. These are the two causes, the major causes I have found behind our inability to behave towards others as we would like them to behave towards us. So the third stage was to discover, discover the causes. Why did we behave in that way? The fourth is to discover a new way of thinking, a new set of beliefs, alternate perceptions or truths that allow us to behave in an ideal way. So think of the way you want to behave from now on and ask yourself, well, what do I need to believe? Do I need to believe that my self-worth is within me, that I'm safe, that I'm the creator of my reality, and that happiness is within me? What do I need to believe that I'm the creator of my reality? What, what do I need to believe in order to behave as I would like to behave from now on? Now, three and four are what we call in Greek metania, which means it's the actual repentance from the point of view that I have choosing another way to function. I am consciously choosing and developing a new way to function. And thus this experience in which I am analyzing is becoming a growth experience. So I don't need to hate myself. I don't need to punish myself. I can use this experience rather than hating and punishing myself as an opportunity to evolve to connect with my higher nature so that I don't need to behave in this way anymore. The fifth stage is to forgive ourselves. Okay, to forgive ourselves for our inability to hit the mark, to get to the center of the bullseye, which is ethical behavior, to be aligned with our higher nature. Forgive that weakness as we did in the last class, forgive others for their inability to be connected with their higher nature, okay? And at this point, we also may want to forgive the others for their participation, because they may have given us a, num a number of stimuli which cause us to behave in that way. So as in the previous exercise in forgiving the others, we can add here again, uh, forgiving ourselves when the others were the, if, the, if you like, the person who was doing harm the abuser, in this case where we are theoretically the abuser, we can also forgive the other for their behavior that may have uh, pushed us towards behaving in that way. And then six stages realizing that our innocence, which is above and beyond the mind, is absolute. That what we're doing is we're forgiving the mind and forgiving the ego, but we ourselves are not the mind and the ego, and that our innocence is actually an absolute because we are the light behind the film. So we're forgiving the film and forgiving the images on the screen, but the light behind the film has no faults. 
the faults are on the film, which is our mind, if you like, and in the images on the screen, which is our body doing what the film or the mind tells us to do. The second reason that we are innocent is that we cannot create the other's reality. We are responsible for our actions, but not for what actually happens to the other, because the other is the creator of his own reality and is using us as we use them, as we mentioned in the previous session, uh, we are using each other for learning experiences. So our actions do not create the other's reality. But we are, however, responsible for our thoughts, words, and choices, and their return to us, their karmic return to us, not to be punished, but to learn by experiencing what we are doing to others, experience it on ourselves. Thus, we make these soul agreements for our mutual learning, we and they. So we may want to ask forgiveness for various reasons, for our thoughts, our words, our actions, our lack of action, our lack of being there with them, but they could probably be included in any behavior that may have hurt the other on any level, emotionally, physically, financially, socially, any level of their being. So we can start out by discovering where we might feel guilty, write a less letter asking for forgiveness. In the previous exercise, we wrote letters explaining our pain and our negative feelings. Now we ask, we write a letter asking for forgiveness and we can do a psychodrama in which we imagine we're talking to the other person and ask forgiveness for them, even if they have left their body. And then the exercise of self-forgiveness. So what is the truth that we can bring to our mind while doing this exercise? Again, the importance of ethical and virtual behavior, okay? Now, my belief is that feeling guilty usually does not prevent us from repeating the same. My belief is that feeling clean and innocent makes us want to stay clean. If I'm as dirty as this young child here, I don't really care if you give me something to do which is dirty. But if I'm clean and I feel totally clean, which in our case means innocent, I don't want to have anything to do with what is dirty. So in my belief, feeling guilty only allows us to repeat what makes us feel guilty. We feel dirty and so it's not a problem. When we feel clean, we go through this process and allow ourselves to feel innocent and clean, we want to maintain that. So our higher nature is actually pure and innocent. Now, take care. These truths are for helping us let go of the past. This is very important. They do not give us the right to behave toward others as we would not like them to behave to us. So we're forgiving the past. We're not getting license to do whatever we want now. Now, what are those truths? Everything is happening according to universal laws, which allow only what is, in our be what is best for our evolutionary process. That means for us and for them. So we may at times play roles for the benefit of their lessons, and they at times may play roles for the benefit of our lessons. So we're mutually growing through this process. Although we are not the cause of their reality, we can still ask forgiveness for the role we have played in their process, and also we can improve our behavior. We are not obliged to continue acting in that way so that they can grow and evolve. That's not a thing. So what are some of those truths? They're the same truths that we talked about in the last lesson when we were talking about when the others were harming us. Even though I am not sure how or why, I believe that I have chosen this experience to learn and grow. It's the same thing we saw in the last lesson having to do with forgiving others. I am willing to perceive that my purpose and soul contract included this experience for some reason. I'm talking about seeing all experiences when they are supposedly the perpetrator and when we are supposedly the perpetrator. In both situations, we have lessons. So we can forgive them and forgive ourselves and just use the opportunities to grow. I now realize that nothing that I or the others do is actually right or wrong, 
we talked about this last week when I thought there are wrong actions, no doubt about that. Killing or raping or harming other people or stealing are wrong actions. There's no doubt about that. But they, when they happen to us, we can transform them into opportunities for growth. Or we can stay hateful and, and hate the others or hate ourselves if we were the perpetrators in these situations. I relinquish the need to accuse myself or the others and to feel injustice or guilt and choose to perceive that all has been and is perfect for our evolutionary process. That everything that has happened in our lives and is happening in our lives is simply a growth opportunity. Nothing could have been different considering the lessons that we needed to learn. Now, many things can be different from now on if we choose to forgive others and forgive ourselves and do this process of discovering a new way of thinking and feeling and behaving, we can create a totally different reality from here on in. There may be some overlap sometime for that to kick in, the results, but it's what we do now with the stimuli of our lives that creates a new future. Even though I'm not sure why and how, I believe that what has happened was based on our subconscious agreements and that we're all engaged in an evolutionary healing dance. We were all playing our roles in each other's growth process. An evolutionary healing dance between us, giving each other stimuli. We have chosen these experiences as opportunities for growth. I respect myself and the others for the roles we have played in each other's healing and evolution and I'm grateful to them for their roles in my evolution and healing. I am an expression of the divine. I accept my faults as opportunity for self-discovery and evolution. We have grown up in a society which states that mistakes are horrible things and if you make them, then you're just not acceptable and we should probably cover them up and let no one know about that. But mistakes, and perhaps time, some class we'll talk, or some session we'll talk about how we can learn by not getting the results that we hope for, uh, are actually the process of self-discovery and evolution. We learn a lot by our faults. We are doing all doing the best we can at each stage of our evolution. We are all loved unconditionally by the divine. It may be difficult to believe that and because we didn't grow up that way. With our, we grew up with a God who was probably angry and probably upset and punishing us. So it's going to take some time perhaps to believe in the unconditional love of the divine towards us. In the center of our being, we are pure as we were created by the divine. So the mind is evolving and changing and creating situations, but our self as consciousness is pure as we were created. We are that pure consciousness, which is above and behind the mind. Now, a few quotes before we do the exercise. This is from Albert Einstein. A human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feeling as something separate from separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. So Einstein is telling us that it's an illusion that we are separate beings. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us and not to people that we don't know. Our task must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion, to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty, which means all beings and nature itself. So there are actually no two beings according to Einstein. And by Seth, 
the experiment that would transform your world would operate on the basic idea that you create your own reality according to the nature of your beliefs and that all existence was blessed and that evil did not exist in it. If these ideas were followed individually and collectively, then the evidence of your physical senses would find no contradiction. They would perceive the world and existence as good, which means per perceiving the others as good and ourselves as good. It's a very important statement here that we create our own reality and all of the existence is basically essentially good. We're not talking about the actions, the behaviors, we're talking about the essence of every being. So we can start, one thing you could do, not now I suspect, but when you're ready to do the exercise the next time is to write a letter asking for forgiveness. You can also do that verbally by closing your eyes and imagining those persons in front of you. And once you have done this, asking for forgiveness, and if possible, correcting anything that you could correct. The steps to realize and accept the moments when our behavior was not correct or just and ask for forgiveness. This is the letter we were talking about or the verbal uh, expression of asking for forgiveness. Try to correct the wrong done. Thirdly, analyze the emotions, illusions, the attachments and needs that caused us to behave in that way. Why would we behave in that way? And then, you, as I said, usually we'll find defensive behavior or intense desire, which is actually illusion, which causes us to behave to someone in ways we would not like them to behave to us. Then fourth, discover a new way of thinking that allows us to behave in an ideal way. Whatever is your ideal way. Fifthly, fifth, forgive ourselves and I would suggest also forgive others for all participation. And six, to realize that our innocence, which is above and beyond the mind, is absolute. That yes, the mind was making mistakes, but we are not the mind. We are a consciousness above and beyond the mind. And here's the email where you can ask for more help on that issue. So we have an opportunity now to choose an event, a behavior, a situation in which we behave in a way about which we don't feel well. We may be feeling guilty or shame or be rejecting ourselves because we behaved in that way. It's important to distinguish between actual feeling guilty and social programming. We already did a, a lesson on social programming. We're not talking about now how we compare to others or what other people think of us or how they behave to us. We're talking about things that we have done for which we feel guilty because we behaved in a specific way, not what other people think of us or whether we succeeded or not in some endeavor. So we're going to do that now. You can sit with the spine straight and breathe more deeply in a relaxed way. With each breath, feel your spine straightening and the mind relaxing. Slowly and deeply allowing the abdomen to relax and the solar plexus to relax. Allowing the shoulders to relax and the arms and the hands. The neck is straight but relaxed. The jaw opens slightly and relaxes. The cheeks relax. And the eyes relax. Allowing the forehead to relax. 
and even the top of the head, feeling an opening there. An opening towards the sky, towards the universe, perhaps even, if you agree, towards the divine. Now let us accept into our mind situations in which we feel that we may have behaved towards others in ways that we regret, that we would have preferred not to behave in those ways. We may be feeling regret or shame or guilt or self-rejection because of our behavior. Allow those moments to pass through your mind And let's choose one moment, one situation, it could be a single event or a situation over time. And let's bring to mind the person or persons who we felt that we have done injustice to. And let's give a few minutes in the beginning to mentally ask them for forgiveness, to admit that our behavior was not what we would have liked it to be. Let's admit that. Let's admit that our behavior was not as we would have liked it to be. And let us ask forgiveness. Now we can bring our hands to the center of the chest. And if any time you're tired, you're tired of holding them there, you can relax them. And you can also put them back. So relax in this state. And let's bring to mind the situation that we have chosen. Let's make the agreement with the subconscious inner child, pain body, higher self, divine, to let go of any feelings of negativity towards ourselves, to be able to accept and love ourselves, but also to become free from any emotions or beliefs or attachments that caused us to believe to behave in that way. And let us feel the feelings that we feel because of the fact that we behave in that way. What do you feel? Let us accept those feelings, they're natural. But let us realize that we are not the feelings. We are a pure consciousness, observing the mind and the feelings it creates. And let us allow those feelings to expand and to dissipate, flowing out of the body. And to expand and dissipate, flowing out of the mind. It's okay to let go of those feelings. They don't serve any purpose. They don't help us. They don't help the other. So we can let them go.
Now let us realize, understand the feelings, the needs, the emotions which caused us to behave in that way. Was there some kind of defense mechanism or intense desire? What was controlling us? What needs were controlling us? Perhaps we can understand which beliefs were controlling us. might even understand which childhood experiences were controlling us. And let us now accept the light flowing into us which heals these causes, allow the light to flow into your body and mind and heal and remove these causes so that you do not need to repeat this behavior, accepting freedom from these causes. the freedom to be who we really want to be. Freedom from attachments, from illusions, Let us imagine a new way of functioning in this situation. How would you like to behave from now on in such a situation? Imagine that new behavior. and realize what you need to feel in order to behave that way. And realize what you need to believe. What belief, what truth will enable you to have the strength, the inner peace, behave as you really would like to. And imagine yourself connected to that truth and able to behave in the way that you choose. Not controlled anymore by defense mechanisms or desires. With clarity, inner peace being our higher nature. Now once again allow the light to flow in and to remove all possible causes of the old behavior all fears, all desires, all illusions, allowing them to be dissolved so that we're free from them. And 
once more visualizing or feeling or imagining our new behavior, the new way we are choosing to deal with such situations. remember the truths that actually this was an experience in which was mutually agreed upon by between us and the other person or persons it was a sole choice for our mutual evolution And nothing can happen to the others or to ourselves, which is not a part of our growth process. So we mutually have chosen this experience as a growth process. That we are responsible for our actions, but not for their reality or their emotions. That we are not our minds or our bodies. But we are pure consciousness above and beyond the mind and the body. And let us allow that light to heal all effects of that experience on us, healing all the physical effects. Healing all the effects on our image of ourselves. healing all effects on our relationships with others. Allow the light to heal all effects. Now once again, let us understand the energies which forced us, which pushed us to behave in that way. Certain desires, needs, or fears, emotions. Let us understand that we're being controlled by childhood programmings. Let us understand ourselves and forgive ourselves for that weakness, for our inability to be on the mark. Experience self-forgiveness, understanding of your soul, of yourself as a soul in evolution, learning growing and perceive this as a growth experience and forgive yourself accept yourself as a growing being as an evolving being Now let us also forgive the other for their participation in these events. Forgiving them for any characteristics or tendencies or behaviors that have may have stimulated our behavior. They're playing their role as we were playing our role. Let us forgive them 
are playing their role. And let us realize now that we and they are actually not our minds or bodies, but pure innocent consciousness above and beyond the mind and body. We may even unite with them as pure consciousness above and beyond the mind the body. And let us feel that opening towards the divine, whatever that word means for you. And accept forgiveness, accept blessing, accept love, and accept healing. Allow the feeling of healing to flow throughout the body into all of the cells and even into the mind. Let us experience reconciliation with ourselves, self-acceptance, and peace. going to count from one to five in order to complete the experience. One, two, three, four, and five. 